Okay, so here we are, and this, according to our turning schedule, would be between five and seven days when we would turn the pile. But before we do that, we need to actually look and observe what has changed, what has happened, so that maybe we can troubleshoot. It'll give us a lot of information about the process of composting that we will be going through for uh, three months here. So one of the first things that struck me as I came upon this pile is the dimensions and how much it has shrunk. I would say that initially it was about at this height and now it has shrunk to this height. That is, and even though we can't really see it, it has shrunk in all dimensions. And so that is probably about a 30% shrinkage. Now you can ask yourself what caused that shrinkage. Some of it was the material literally collapsing in on itself. Another is actually the air being utilized by the microorganisms to metabolize and to convert these molecules of carbohydrates and proteins into building blocks for the cells of other bacterium and fungus that are here in the compost pile. So as we look at the change of the dimensions of the pile, the next thing I would look at is the temperature. And the temperature is one of our most important gauges. We'll be looking at it throughout the next three weeks um, to see where the temperature changes. Right now, it's exactly where I want it to be. It's at 140 degrees. Now let's think about that for a second. We started with ingredients that really had no temperature whatsoever. And just by simply adding water, by adding the right recipe, we've created heat. What is the heat from? Where does the heat really come from? Well, the heat in the compost pile is really the metabolic heat, the heat that is generated from all these microorganisms digesting all this food stuff that's in the compost pile. I like to use an analogy sort of like if you had a room full of kids at a dance party and they were all dancing around, drinking punch and eating some cake, before you know it, you would have to open the windows of the auditorium or whatever because they're moving around creating heat. They're metabolizing so that they can continue to dance. This is sort of a similar situation. There's all this life activity now in this compost pile and the thermometer is an indicator of that. If there was no heat in this pile, then either our recipe is off or there's not enough water. That's the last thing that as I'm walking up here, I'm going to draw our attention to. Now on the surface here, we can see that the material is kind of dry. But if I just take the first layer off, we can see that there's moisture inside the pile. The water, as I mentioned when we were making the compost pile, is where the bacterium and fungus live. But the water is also this unbelievable element. You know, we travel around the universe looking for water because water is not only the universal solvent, but it is this incredible molecule that makes things decompose and happen. It makes the metabolism happen. It also helps the movement of electrons, which are the energy uh, that is making this whole thing happen. Okay, so this is the first turning of your compost pile. And really one of the most important things to remember is that this is the fire and air phase, basically, where the metabolic fires are consuming a lot of the materials that you initially made your compost pile with. And so because of that, we're going to have to replace some of the elements that have been used up, mainly air and water. So as you can see, we're starting to move it, but also kind of fluff it up to bring air back into the compost so the microorganisms can utilize the oxygen and nitrogen and hydrogen that are in the atmosphere to help decompose. So the outside is going to end up hopefully on the inside. The reason why this is important is because the type of method that we are using for composting, the layering method, uh, makes it so that the layers eventually need to be mixed. So this is what's happening in the first turning of the compost pile is a great mixing. What's also really important is that water, just like we did the first time, is going to be added almost continuously. 
you need to add as much water, almost as if you were to take it in your hand and squeeze it and have drops of water drop out. Try to imagine that the water is not only lubricating the digestion, but it's actually being incorporated into the finished product. When you have finished compost, it has this wonderful moisture to it, and that is because it has become incorporated into the humus and other parts of the compost. It's really important that as you're applying the water, it is a misting and not just a dumping of water. The misting enables the water to penetrate the material better and instead of bouncing off the surface of the matter. You can also see the beginning of a kind of gray or white mold in the compost pile. This is mushrooms or fungus, I should say, starting to move in and really break down the carbohydrates in the pile. This is a wonderful beginning of the decomposition. If we were to break into this pile and it was predominantly this white mold, we would be concerned because the pile would be getting too hot. These are thermophilic, heat-loving microorganisms and you don't want them to get too carried away. If the pile gets too hot, namely above 150 degrees, what happens is the overactivity that can happen will utilize the carbon, nitrogen, and other elements that are in the compost pile and leave behind just a carbon skeleton. And you end up with a material that literally looks burnt, too dark. So you need to make sure that your pile doesn't get too hot. The way that you avoid that is by making sure the pile is mixed well, your carbon to nitrogen ratio is appropriate, meaning that you have enough carbonish material, and lastly, that the pile isn't too dry. Believe it or not, a pile that is too dry can also get too hot. The people that are turning the compost pile can start to monitor the smell of the compost as well. You want it to have an earthy smell. It'll also have a little bit of an ammonia smell. You can't avoid that. But you don't want to be knocked over by the smell of ammonia. If you do have a too much smell of ammonia, then you'll need to add some more carbonous material at this stage, meaning brown material. You'll need to add more brown material like straw or leaves. The steam is a result of, of course, the water that we added, and now it's volatilizing because of the heat, the metabolic heat, of course, of the microorganisms. This is a wonderful sign that you've had enough water to create a vapor. But again, like everything in composting, you need to monitor whether or not there's too much steam or too much moisture. In this context, it's perfect. The steam is rising and we will be replacing that water vapor with water today. What's also exciting about this first phase, this first turning of the compost pile, is you can still see all the materials that you started out with. Next time we turn the pile, in another seven days, everything will have been transformed and it will be harder to discern what the starting materials were. This is part of the mystery and magic of composting. Matter is neither created nor destroyed. The matter is just transformed into something amazing and beautiful for the soil and plants. As we're getting down to one of the last layers that we made, you can see that it is too dry. Notice the light color. That is an indicator of it not transforming yet. So one of the important concepts that I want you to get at this stage of the game is that compost is a process and in this process you always have to make adjustments. We are making adjustments here with this compost pile. There are pockets that are too dry. There might even be pockets that are a little too moist. So by mixing and turning not only do we get to change things but we get to look in we get to, as I like to say, taste the sauce 
taste what the recipe was, and make corrections. At this stage of the game, when you're constructing your compost pile, it's almost impossible to get it too wet because the materials and the activity require so much water. However, if you are using materials that in of themselves are wet to begin with, like cow manure, really wet grass clippings, you can end up with piles that are too wet. The way to correct this, of course, is to incorporate into the pile dry materials. One indicator that your pile is too wet is that it will have a terrible off smell. This off smell is produced by anaerobic bacterium and they actually compound the problem by releasing moisture and other kind of components to hold in the moisture in the compost pile. So the best way to counteract this moisture and this anaerobic problem is to add drier materials and sometimes even more porous materials so that you have air pockets to dry it out. The smell will be like a stinky sulfury smell. So again, we're continuing to add water and make sure that everything that gets moved over has an opportunity to get as much water on it as it can. And we're fluffing it up to add oxygen. In the next couple of days, initially, the temperature of the compost pile will be ambient temperatures. But what's so fun and so fascinating is that within 48 hours, the temperature will climb to 100 and then to 140 degrees again. Remember that all of these materials in the natural world have bacteria and fungus on them. You don't need to introduce these microorganisms. We are only bringing them to life, bringing them back out of a suspended animation. So take a moment to reflect on the wonderment of nature that everything we have used has been made available to us. It isn't as if we had to manufacture something. All we needed to simply do was gather ingredients that were no longer of use to us on the farm, pile them up in a certain kind of ratio, and then add water. And it's this amazing marriage between our understanding of this decomposition process and the composting process of what really needs to happen to transform this material into an amazing gift for the farm. Composting is like cooking and there should be nothing offensive even at this stage of the game. You should never encounter smells or um, piles of ants or wasps. You know, if you take the temperature of your compost pile and it's low, that's one indication. But also if you break into your compost pile and you see certain uh, life forms like millipedes or ants or earthworms, this method of composting that we are demonstrating is a thermophilic kind of composting. And that means that first we are inviting bacteria and fungus that love heat and generate heat. And the heat not only breaks down the materials in a very effective way, it also sterilizes the compost. By bringing the temperature up to 135 or 150 in that range, you are out competing E. coli, which is one of the bacteriums that we are concerned about in this situation. And we need to create a large popula population of thermophilic loving bacteria and fungus that will basically push out the pathogenic bacteria like E. coli. There are other methods of composting that don't create a heated pile, but for our purposes as farmers, it's essential that we create thermophilic compost piles. When you're finishing up, what's really important is that you have a beautiful looking pile. And beautiful, I mean that it has the right dimensions. It's pleasing to the eye. If you're in a climate that
uh, has a lot of rain, you'll want a rounded top. If you're in a climate that has a lot of dry climate, like here in California, you also want a rounded top so that it, it can hold in the elements better. If you're worried about it being too moist, make it more of a rectangle with a flat top. This is the art of composting. Put care and love into it because this is what is eventually going to be providing nourishment for your plants and your trees and your other crops. It's important to actually create a beautiful compost pile.